sorry for the exceptionally long gap in between videos I've been fluffing around with stuff that uh, doesn't really give a lot of um, visual progress for the amount of effort that's going into it so what I've done is I've um, made a start on getting the inner guards all sorted out and putting the chassis rails um, in the correct positions etc so you'll see down the bottom there there's a little extension on the bottom of the chassis rail a bit of a mounting plate that was um, a bit of a cheat to drop the engine down about 30 millimeters from where it would have sat um, the chassis rails basically needed to be at that height so they would line up with the front cross member there which has the bumper in front of it and all that sort of carry on so I could have designed it with the rails lower and then it would have just caused issues up at the front here so I decided um, with the way the engine sits it was a good idea to leave the rails at the same height and then put that little extension on the bottom and as you can see that um, that tapers towards the inside there so that helps with the mounting position of the um, caster arm mounts and um, giving clearance for the engine <coughs> excuse me so we've got um, the passenger side is very close to being uh, complete as far as the metal work goes uh, there'll be some bits and pieces going onto that bracket at the bottom there going uh, towards the rear and towards the front and there's, um, there's a couple of little gussets missing at the top there um, and some holes to fill where that original bracket used to come down from there and going forward from there we've got to work on um, what's happening with the air system there was obviously a big fan that sat in between these two holes that you can see here it sucks from the top and then it blows into the bottom there that goes into the cabin um, so we've got to do something different with that setup but I'll get there so what's basically left on this side is where that battery box is and um, anyone who's had anything to do with cars will know that um, lead acid batteries tend to leak and that causes rust so that's what all that issue was with, um, with the front of our chassis rail and that cross member earlier on was all to do with the rust from that battery area so I've got a I'll have to chop quite a lot of that out to make a nice job of it so that we don't have issues going forward in a few years time I want it rusting out later on down the track <coughs> so over here excuse me I've got a bit of a frog in my throat today over here is the um, engine mostly assembled not probably not for the final time but the sump is on shouldn't have to come off front cover etc we've um, we've been dealing with Hartley engines and motorsport down in Palmerston North they've been kind enough to send us some bits and bobs to convert it back to a factory oiling system rather than dry sump and, um, and we've had Collins profile cutting in um, Sunshine Ave in Hamilton here and they have vapor blasted these parts for us so the whole sump and this front cover and these cam timing covers etc just tried to tidy it all up and make it look a lot nicer um, there's still a little bit to go there if we want to make sort of show car material out of it but that's a good start anyway so other little things that chew up time that we don't um, don't have to um, focus on so much sometimes dipstick dipstick tube both custom length a little um, boss let's call it a boss welded on there a little bit of dirt on that weld and that um, that gives us our oil level because we wouldn't have had a dipstick otherwise and this was a, um, a dry sump converted engine so we don't have an oil filler port at this point in time cap stalk whatever you want to call it the factory ones are actually quite long they come up really high like about this high they look um, unsightly when you're not running the factory plastic cover so we've had a wee chat with Hartley Engines and Motorsport we might do a billet one that plugs into there and has a nice billet aluminium cap on it so um, we'll see what happens with that I can make one um, if I have to but uh, Nelson thought that he might be making some anyway for some customers so he'll get on with that so um, the other thing you can see here this engine mount normally this portion here was residing back in there when it was mounted in the Sylvia and um, in the Sylvia the rear of the engine was basically up against the firewall when that was in that position 
um, however in the Gloria when all this was back here the engine was a very long way forward in the engine bay um, it helped with a couple of other things but it really wasn't going to be good for trying to get the thing under the bonnet and um, balance of the car and all that sort of carry on so that's um, that's a pretty simple mod just a 10 mil thick plate make them out slightly differently shift it further forward and then we can retain a lot of the original factory oil bowl for the sump um, with some clearance to get it over the top of the, the steering rack there will be about 10 to 15 millimeters of oil that will sit in the front portion of the pan that won't um, simply gravity feed to the back but that oil level is higher than what the oil level in the pan would be normally so it'll just flow around it'll just become part of the circuit it'll be an issue if you literally run the engine out of oil um, there might be 200 300 mils of oil left in the front of the motor that might have saved it that you won't be able to get out but hey that's the way it goes um, so the other thing power steering pump that's um that's a long way out from the center line we've got 700 mils between chassis rails which is about there that's about 350 mils to here so obviously this is out beyond the chassis rail and the way things have worked out it does actually go over the top of the chassis rail but i think i think we need to run a custom pulley to get our um, to get our clearance so a slightly smaller pulley which unfortunately will make it run faster uh, but that's not a big deal anyway I don't think this engine is going to be pulling big revs all the time with the use that's intended for the car it's going to be a road car so that'll be okay all right that's um, that's pretty much all I've got to um, got to update you on with that one at the moment there's, um, there's probably a, like you might as well tell you what I've done with the March while I'm here while I'm yakking this um, this piece of aluminium here chop that out of the front corner on the um, on the little Nissan March I've done the same on both sides and then basically straight lined it across between those two corners there that you can see one by my wrist and the one on the far side and um, shaped that nicely and um, the plan there was to try and throw that back on the bench try and reduce the drag at the front of the car a little bit it's not going to make a heck of a lot of difference so we've got a lot of horsepower compared to the weight of the car but I always just looked at those front corners and thought they looked disgusting um, and you know, I had a bit of time the other day and I was like you know what and then cut them up change them make them look a little bit nicer so um, I haven't had it off the trailer I haven't had it out in the open and see what it looks like but I think it's an improvement so we'll see all right I'm gonna stop yakking go and get myself a drink and um, I'll keep you posted I want to try and get that engine mounted in this big hole here with those guards finished off some stage this week and then we can um, we can chop up the trans tunnel and start to fit that big six speed I think it's a G35 transmission uh, and we'll see where we're at right cheers guys like share subscribe etc if you like what you see all good catch us later